my hair feels stronger, full of life, replenished with a healthy shine. Always flawless, never fake. Now you're guaranteed to find your true match. The more you put on, the sexier you are. New Volume Extend Mascara from Rimmel London. Hello, vibrant, beautiful skin, day and night. I'm in a limelight, I'm in a different industry, and I have to do things that are going to make me happy. Oh yeah, I had my nose done, I didn't really need it to do, and as you can see on the cover of the book, it's not even majorly, but that's just me. After four years of just really wanting to have the surgery done, are you addicted to plastic surgery? I am not addicted to plastic surgery. It's the kind of thing where my world, my body, my soul, I pay my own bills, I'm going to do what I want to make myself feel and look better. Popular culture has taken a turn for the worse, including when it comes to what we regard as beautiful and the appearance of celebrity. This celebrity endorsement promotes everything that is fake about celebrity and beauty. It makes ordinary people feel inadequate and promotes celebrity as superior. Whereas we used to desire the beauty of Elizabeth I and the rounded figures of Botticelli's paintings, we now celebrate extremely narrow conventions of beauty, which have become sexualized, obsessed with plastic surgery and fake. Is it really beautiful or is it fake is the question I want to explore along with the negative effects this unattainable beauty is having. Is the appearance of celebrity really desirable? We generally aspire for a tight youthful face with slapped on makeup, high cheekbones and a defined jawline. We value a tall skeletal figure which is mirrored by many celebrities. Giddens would suggest we use these celebrities as navigational points and pick and choose parts of celebrities to construct an ideal self, even if the outcome is hideous. McLuhan puts forward the idea that living in a global village we have become obsessed with celebrity culture. Nowadays with technological advances, ordinary people create internet blogs, fan pages and even our own quest for fame. We constantly follow celebrities and are faced with videos and pictures of sexualized, edited and slender text. Young girls are being brainwashed into what they perceive as attractive and are negatively influenced. An example of this is MissBimbo.com, where you can create your own fancy Barbie. Aimed at young girls from 5 and up, this website feeds ideology of an ideal weight and figure. Also, messages of lifestyle, romantic love, status and wealth are portrayed as desirable. Men are shown as superior. Pro-anorexic websites give you tips on how to look like celebrities and models. It proves low self-esteem and body dissatisfaction is rising due to the culture we live in. These sites give you dieting tips and are unhealthy and damaging. To have a full-figured person on the front of a magazine cover would be just as bizarre as a 60-year-old woman advertising a beauty product. This proves our slim and shallow perceptions of good looks. This is known as the beauty myth. We subconsciously attach negative characteristics towards ageing and define youthfulness as attractive. Celebrities aren't fooling anyone when it comes to grasping onto their youth. Comparing ourselves to this golden standard is unnecessary. The fine lines we have to feel to fit the media's image of desirable is impractical, but also false. Audiences need to understand that in postmodern society there is no truth. We live in a culture of hyper-reality and intertextuality. The notions of beauty we are faced with are a false parody. An example of hyperreality is the photo manipulated pictures of Victoria Beckham's Armani adverts, which were revealed just 24 hours after an MP declared airbrushed photos should carry a health warning to protect youngsters. This picture carries dangers of believing that this is an achievable body and healthy body. Even the most unattractive can be made to look beautiful. We compare ourselves to celebrities that have likely undergone surgery always want bigger, bigger is better and whereby image manipulation is used to airbrush and make celebrities look slimmer, taller, sexier with a perfect complexion. Oh, celebrities are used to create false consciousness and commodity fetishism. The media uses celebrity endorsement to promote products and sales. For example, slim icons are used to sell dieting programs and makeup, eyelashes and hair extensions are promoted by those who we desire to look like and those who are obviously good looking. Because we as a passive audience are so concerned with physical appearance. Well, it wouldn't work the other way around, would it? We are saturated and bombarded with advertisements and beauty products. Thanks to affordable luxury brands and clever fakes, we can copy rich people's material possessions. Audiences are made to feel inadequate to promote these sales. Giddens suggests we use the media as a toolbox. This proves just how standardised and formulaic we are. It dumbs us down by appealing to our worst values. The objects we buy to express ourselves has an impact on the project of the self. 
However, the market only offers a certain range of products and therefore we are just conforming to this celebrity culture. This behaviour makes us materialistic and we become simplistic and unsophisticated by conforming to their lifestyle. Even I admit to spending over £100 on an outfit a few weeks ago, which I would have never have done if there wasn't so much pressure to look and feel beautiful these days. Marxists would criticise this culture as an ideological state apparatus. We desire a glamorous lifestyle and accept this over-the-top celebrity culture as common sense. Celebrity culture and mass media play a role in influencing the reflexive project of the self. In modernity, lifestyles portrayed in the media, for example, celebrity lifestyle, romantic love and glamour, influence our outlook on life. Status, wealth and most importantly glamour are portrayed as giving an identity power. Similarly, in modernity, the body is now an outer expression of ourself, to be improved and worked upon. All aspects of the body are now up for grabs, even to the extremes of going under the knife. Lifestyle magazines and other magazines closely focus on the reconstruction of the body, such as Achieving Celebrity Bodies, You Can Get One Too, and FHM magazines, We Can Rebuild You. Welcome to Celebrity Gossip. I'm Brittany Shears and I'm here to celebrate the top three beach figures of 2010. This year's new fashion trend is not to shake your booty, but to shake your bones. Number three on our list is Amy Winehouse. With a little bit of coke, booze and cigarettes, you too could achieve this disheveled, gaunt look. Apart from the cola, everybody can afford to copy this desirable look. At number two, Tara Reid has been spotted on Laguna Beach. Our actor, who plays a minor role in American Pie and Scrubs, here she scrubs up well. Her secret is just one block of cheese a day. With a few nips and tucks, you too can accomplish this amazing beach body. And in at number one is Nicole Richie, Paris' sidekick. Spotted looking super skinny, she's guaranteed to turn all heads and is the perfect role model for those wishing to achieve the perfect beach body this year. Thanks for watching. Join us next time for tips to guarantee that you too can look like your favorite stars. My name is Brittany Shears and this was Celebrity Gossip. Although exaggerated, these are similar messages we are faced with every day, constantly telling us how to look and construct our identity. The media drip feeds us these kinds of messages from side zero to the glamour and expense of celebrity culture. This celebrity culture is causing young girls to develop eating disorders and a distorted view of body image. The focus on appearance causes some to become depressed and encourages sexualisation of young women. This distortion persuades young girls to present themselves as sexually available and promiscuous. We become insecure and obsessed, therefore this causes gatekeeping to take place. Third wave feminists are critical of this focus on appearance and objectification. A famous feminist, Laura Mulvey, points to the media's representation of women as objects. They represent women with visual and erotic impact for the male eye. Women are represented as voyeuristic, where they are viewed as beautiful, or fetishistic, where women are viewed as excessively sexual beings. However, both these notions of beauty are narrow and unattainable. This constant image damages self-esteem and has a negative effect on many. Jennifer Aniston Lauren Conrad Cheryl Cole I want to be like Jennifer Lopez <laughs> I'd, I'd probably want to look like Helen of Bonham Carter and um, probably the Olsen twins but it's bad because I'll never have enough money to be like them I want to lose weight and have the figure that Cheryl Cole has yeah I do think they're negative I feel like I always have to be on a diet all the time I'm always buying different cosmetics to try and be like them I think celebrity culture is bad because it makes women feel inadequate and it makes them feel that they have to conform to society's ideas of perfection. We need to stop comparing ourselves to these kind of celebrities. In my opinion, their appearance is false and not even truly beautiful. Their looks are unnatural and if we too had their money, we could achieve their looks through dieting, plastic surgery and professionals to help us look this way. Why should physical appearance be so important to us? I feel that in popular culture today, we should celebrate talent rather than the looks and appearance of celebrities. Image has been set on the high pedestal in the media and we now live in a celebrity driven culture. Far too often, women are frequently in the media because they are seen as attractive. This reflects our culture becoming simplistic and obsessed with image. It is dumbing us down and having extremely negative effects on its audience. <laughs>